Okay, so I've set up um, shared hat day on the 7th of February. This year is going to be just for fun, but all the other years I'd like it to be um, for charity, to raise money for St Giles. In fact, not just for St Giles, to raise money for this new system that's been set up to help terminally ill patients and to sort of sort out paperwork and logistics and just the stuff that you just don't need to worry about when you're not very ill. They've set up this new service which I'm the first like pilot of the service. Haven't got a name for it yet so I'm just hoping um, with my awareness it could kind of like not be named after me but that, that me or the trip kids can give it a name for the service. So yeah Anyway, we're still currently in temporary accommodation, but we'll be moving into a house, which is a bit ironic because it's where we moved from before we went to Cornwall. So it just feels like the past seven years have just been one massive bad dream. Really, isn't it? Anyway, I just thought I'd do a quick video diary of the accommodation that is temporary accommodation, which is like really, oh, you know, more heater in the corner, my telly. Um, back to me. This is the room. Bit grim, but it's only been for sort of a week, really. So it's it. Not so bad. Things are getting sorted in the end. And looks like I've got a bit of luck coming my way. Good luck coming my way. Uh, which is kind of a bad time. So anyway, as long as everyone else is good. And I'm still managing to put smiles on people's faces. Which is my job now. And when it comes down to somebody saying, you know, what to do for a living... I'm not a comedian to put thing, you know, smiles on people's faces. I just like to see people smile, like to see people laugh. And as soon as I can make someone do that, after sort of coming into my company feeling a bit grim, and I make them smile and laugh, then that's my job done. So my job is smile maker. Uh, <laughs> which is all good. So I'm feeling very tired. Um, at my last session of chemotherapy, I was told that I might not be able to have chemotherapy, my next lot of chemotherapy. I might have to go on a couple of months break because my kidneys have got to the point where uh, they've turned to sponge now. Basically saying, no, I don't want no more, I don't want no more. So we'll just have to see what happens if the protein reduces in my um, blood. If the protein reduces in my water and my kidney function goes semi-normal again in my blood, then I'll be having my next session of chemo. If not, then I've got to have a break. Obviously that's nerve wracking because the first thing that you think of being on the Avastin, especially is, you know, the Avastin is keeping the cancer away and it's stopping it from growing. Stop putting that into my body and, you know, the inevitable might happen sooner rather than later. And so I'm a bit anxious about it at the moment. Um... Because I've only just found a house for my kids. I, I'd like to be able to get them settled and, you know, sort schools out and things like that. So, and make it look like a home for them. You know, that's my main priority. There's still some things I've not finished as far as um, memory box things goes because... Um, obviously everything's had to go into storage, so I'm now able to cl complete some of that. And there's still loads 
bugged me. There's still loads more that I've got left to do that I want to do. So, yeah, one thing at a time, I suppose. Get get ourselves out of here and into a proper home and then just think about the next level after that, I suppose. I think that's what you have to do to be able to get through rather than thinking about, oh, you know, we're homeless, we need a house, I'm stopping, might be stopping treatment, the cancer might come back, the schools, you know, the kids not sat in school, I need to sort out their clothes, I need to do the washing, I need to hoover my rug. Because my, my rug got rolled up and it didn't get hoovered before it went into storage and it's just like, Anyway, so, yeah, when you're going through something like this, I think that everybody keeps asking me the same question. How do you do it? You're so strong. You, you're in, in, inspiring and all this. And I've learned only now, after like 38 years, that you've got to face them one by one, baby steps at a time. Don't try and conquer all your problems all in one go you've got to prioritize and think well what comes first what do i need to sort out first let's sort that out then move on to the next one and so on and so forth and that way you you kind of get the job done so i will won't be putting this on until i move into the new house so we're going to be in the new house when you see this <laughs> i'm going to give you a tour of the house as well once we're in there and then you know I will report back on, on how had the genetics test done as well. So there's lots to be reporting back on next month because uh, we'll have the results of the genetics test, new house, new schools, to see if the Avastin has worked and if I'm going on a break or not. So, yeah, next few weeks there's going to be a lot going on. So I'm going to be talking to you lots again. I'm blogging regular and love to everybody and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.